Welcome to Shark Jets. I'm Skidvis. Today I'm going to walk you through how to set up a project in Unity to make an Oculus VR game. Just the basics, nothing fancy, just to get your feet wet. So let's go ahead and jump into Unity and get that done. All right, so here we go. First thing you want to do is have Unity installed, okay? But there are requirements, so when you're installing, you want to make sure you're using a newer version, of course. Uh, but if you're going to develop for the Oculus Go or the Oculus Quest, you want to make sure you have the Android build support installed with SDK, NDK, JDK, and AOK um, because those are Android devices. So for now, we'll go ahead and create a new project. Make sure it's 3D. We'll call this Touchy Feely. And we'll wait for that to start up. All right. Now we'll go ahead and go to the Asset Store. So if you don't know how to get there, go to Window Asset Store. And we want to install the Oculus integration. So we'll come up here and search for Oculus and pick Oculus integration. And then we'll want to download and import this. And it's going to take a few minutes. When it's done downloading, it's going to confirm that you want to import all of its assets. So you can sort through here and see all the different things that have been bundled together. So you can review that at your own time. But for now, we're just going to go ahead and hit import and wait for that. All right, once that's done, it's going to let you know there's some new plugins. Just say yes and upgrade and restart. And it'll ask you a few times here and then actually go ahead and restart. Okay, we're done. So the first thing we're going to do is add a plane so that we have a place to stand. And I'm going to go ahead and create a new material, which is just going to be the ground for us to stand on to make it not so white. And we'll drop that on the plane. And then we will delete the camera because we're not going to need it. We're going to have our own camera. So if you go into the project files and search for OVR player controller, you'll find this prefab that Oculus has made and it will have everything we need. So we just drag that into the scene and you'll see right there we've got camera and some colliders and all kinds of nice things pre-standardized for us. So we'll just bring that up real quick. And we want to make a change here. If you open that up, you'll see a bunch of nested items, a bunch of children. We want to go to the OVR camera rig and set its tracking origin type to floor so that it takes the floor into account if you're making a um, game that takes use of more than just a stationary position. The next thing we'll want to do is add the local avatar. So if we search for that, you'll see another prefab called local avatar. And this is what's going to give us our hands in the VR environment. So we want to drag that into tracking space. So we'll go ahead and just drag that up here. And there it is. And you'll see here on the right side, you can select to enable the body, enable the hands, or enable the controller if you want to see the controller in the game. That's how you do all that. Um, and if you try to run this now, you're not going to see hands because you need to provide a developer ID to Oculus. So if we come up to the menu under Oculus, under Avatars and Edit Settings, you'll see these two boxes um, that require an ID. Uh, so if you're going to build Rift apps, you got to get a developer ID from Oculus. And if you're going to build Quest or Go apps, you also got to get an ID. So for our example, we're just going to punch in a few bogus numbers there. One, two, three, four, five. And that will give us our hands. So now I'm going to go back into the scene and drop in a cube. And I'm going to make it relatively small, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2. I always do that, 0 0.2. All right, and we'll just move that 
over here somewhere. And the next thing we want to do is add a rigid body to the cube so that gravity affects it. So rigid body. And we will leave that alone. All right. Now we will also want to add a script that Oculus has given us called Grabbable. So we'll just add that to the cube. And that's all we have to do. We don't have to change anything else on the cube. Um, and now we get to configure the hands to be able to grab things. So if we go back to the OVR player controller under tracking space under the camera, uh, you'll see a left and right hand anchor. Uh, so we will want to add another child to both of these. So we'll just go ahead and add a sphere underneath the left hand anchor. We'll turn off its mesh, make its collider a trigger, and set the radius to something smaller. And then we'll do the same here to the right hand. So another sphere, trigger, turn the mesh off, point 0.1. And that's going to basically, that, that sphere is going to act as the actual grabbing part of the hand. Um, so if we go back to, we can close those back now. Oh, let me give them open. Uh, if we go back to left hand anchor, we want to add a script to this called OVR Grabber. So as you can see, it goes with the grabbable. So click on Grabber, and it's going to have a bunch of things that it wants to know about. So it wants to know who the player is. So we'll just drop our player right there into the bottom. It wants to know who the parent transform is, and that's where the grabbing item is going to be. So that would be the left hand anchor. So we'll just put that there. And then we have another one, the grip transform, which is the same kind of thing, really, where the parent and where the grip is going to happen are both in the same place for us. Then which controller are we using, right? We're going to be in the left hand, so let's use the left touch controller. And then this next one here is the grab volume, and that's where which surface are we using to determine whether we're grabbing something or not, and that's going to be that sphere. So let's change this size here to 1 and then drag the sphere for the left hand into that element. And now we can go ahead and do the exact same thing to the right hand, add the grabber control or component, um, drag the player into the player section, drag the right hand into the parent transform, the right hand again to the grip transform, set the grab volume to one, and drag that second sphere into that. Now, if everything went well, we are ready to rock and roll. So I'm going to save this and then put on my headset and run the program and see what happens. Now, a couple of things you may have noticed. I forgot to set the controller to be the right touch controller. So I went in and set that after the fact. Um, this little error message that I'm getting about my microphone failing, if we go back to the OVR camera rig, no, it's the local avatar. Um, down here at the bottom, it says can own microphone, and I'm not using the microphone, so that's why we're getting that error message. So now that that's all taken care of, you can see we can go ahead and start up the game. And you can see I pick up the cube and move it from hand to hand. It's not perfect, but it is better than nothing. It's well enough to get you on your way. Uh, again, if you go back into all the files that we just downloaded from Oculus, and we just look at all the scenes. There are a ton of scenes in there to show you all the different things you can do. So you can uh, see what it's like to be in a room and see what locomotion looks like and all these great things to get you started on your Oculus development journey. And there you have it. We've completed our first Oculus development project. In our next video, I'm going to go ahead and talk about the differences between uh, running it on the Rift and running it on the Quest. Um, not a lot of differences, but we've covered a lot of ground in this episode, so I want to break it up and uh, make the next one a little bit more chewable. So, thanks for watching. If you like this, please subscribe and uh, leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Thanks.